last time on Doki Doki Tropical Rain. Yo! Well, this looks, uh, this looks nice. When you go up to percent, I know it's going to be hard. You're not used to it. That's perfectly fine. But I want you to be strong. So for you to be strong, I want you to imagine something. A hypothetical, to say it simply. I want you to imagine that you're all you're doing is reading the poem to me. You? Just remember what I told you, alright? Just imagine I'm reading it to you. Exactly. <laughs> shot me a dirty look. I wave apologetically, sitting back in my chair. Monica spoke up when Yuri walked to the front of the classroom. Okay everyone, our final poem presenter is going up. Please give them your undivided attention. Thanks. After her short message, Yuri cleared her throat. It seemed momentarily panicked, but then her eyes landed on me. When we made eye contact, she closed her eyes. She whispered something to herself. And then she opened her eyes, facing the crowd. My, my poem is called The Ticking Hands. She took a deep breath and began to speak. Passing seconds shake the ground of which I stand like gravel along an on-track road. Vibrations jitter from the approach of an enroaching vehicle, a remnant of civilization. Does one stand as uh, idle, idle as a vagabond when a future escape is uncertain, or do they launch into the fray of the blinding headlights for the for the securement of relief? Uh, passing minutes bewilder the mind, mutilating anyone's respective reactions. Moments meander me meticulously, yet hastily halt at the closing of the eyes. Reality lengthens under the rays of the sun. I trade away the net of Cyrilin for the uh, cloak of darkness, embraced by the full warmth of the moment. Uh, passing hours leaves, leave the soul to wander the void, the bastion of solitude, the emptiness, the nothingness, none of it paled in comparison to its embrace. It cares for me, it comforts my entity through its vague confines, it cradles me in its presence like a baby in the womb. Once I enter, I wish never to leave. The void's rosy complexion glistens in the serene beauty. It feels so nice. It's so nice. Uh, all, all this time, I've only wished to be with you. Hmm. Everyone in the room was silent. They're drinking, uh, they're drinking it all in. I whispered. Just wait for it. Holy heck, there it is. The room, the room erupted in applause. I believe Yuri's noise level was near what Monica got. She, mild, she smiled bashfully, gave a bow, and quickly shuffled back over to us. Monica, taking the opportunity to give us a chance to relax, went off to make an announcement at the front of the classroom. Thank you everyone for coming. I stopped listening, though when Yuri walked up to me. Oh, Finn. She wrapped her arms around me tightly, cutting off my airflow. They loved it. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, I did. My vision began to blur. But I might not see much here in a sec. Hmm? Why is that? You're crushing me. Oh. oh. She let go of me. S sorry about that. I didn't mean to. I held up my hand, cutting her off. It's fine, Yuri. No harm done. Plus, did a pretty good job, and I'm really am proud of you, my friend. But yes, I saw you reading it, and I and I saw the uh, the applause afterwards. I'm really proud of you, Yuri. It takes a lot of courage to do what you did. Thank you, Finn. But I couldn't have done it without you, you know. Your method helped me greatly. I waved my hand. Nonsense. You're the one who that presented, after all. I just gave you a little push. Well, I'm greatly thankful for that push. 
anytime for, well, motivation. Yuri looked off into a distance. She seemed to be lost in thought. They liked it. They actually... Anyone, anyone else feeling like that? Whoa. Yuri! Rushing forward, I grabbed her before she could hit the ground. Uh... <laughs> oh my glob. What the heck happened to her? Is she... Again? I froze. Again? I turned to Natsuki. What do you mean again? Is she passed out? Is she did this on the first day of the club, you know? She scoffed. Honestly, it's like she can't function without someone to watch her every dang move. I pursed, I pursed my lips. Well, that's not very nice. Uh, I'm sure she just got overwhelmed, Natsuki. She's not used to public speaking. Exactly. Well, I... Sorry. What was that? Nothing. Forget about it. Well, I, I forgive you then. Alec. I'll let the school nurse know about Yuri and stay with her until she gets here. Shouldn't take longer than a few minutes. While I do that, why don't you go enjoy the festival? But don't you want to go enjoy it? It only comes once a year. She shrugs. Don't worry about me. There's not much for me here, so I'm content enough to stay behind. Also, I know you've been wanting to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Monica. Uh... Well, uh, that's... Mm hmm That's what? Monica. Ah, sh Oh, hey, Monica. Finn was just telling me about how you would love to hold your hand as you pranced around the festival. Well, if we're gonna do that, might as well put on the gloves, which I don't have right now, unfortunately. Said it would be a dream come true. He said that? That seems a little... out of character. Well, he didn't really say that, but it was implied. Oh, kill me. But I can't say I wouldn't enjoy chilling with Monica for a bit. Yeah, I don't mind. This friends. And also, no offense, I know you're my least favorite, Monica, but again, yeah, we're better off as friends because I already know someone who's in love with you, like Nuru and, uh, that minor. <laughs> oh boy, seems like uh, some of my friends and other people out there are Monica fans, so... I, uh, I, 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 I um, have no complaints about that. I mean, if you're up to it, I would like to spend some time exploring the festival with you. Maybe not the hand-holding thing, though. Dang. What was that? Uh, nothing. Ah, oh, bullshit. It was nothing. Natsuki did the same thing not two minutes ago. Not two minutes ago, rather. But whatever. Okay, well, you wanna get going? Uh, I would. But is Yuri okay? She's fine. But... But nothing. Now go, enjoy yourselves. I'm fine here, I promise. You know, she seems really insistent of all on us leaving. We grabbed our collars and shoved us out the door. As I walked out, I heard your... Uh, <laughs> I heard Natsuki whisper something. I told you so. Whatever that was about, I had no clue. But hey, now I can go enjoy the festival. Yeah. I'm still worried about Yuri though. Passing out like that can't be normal. Even if she did pass out on the first day of the club, shouldn't it be more concerning if she's done it before? Hmm. I mean... I, I mean, it's natural for someone to faint like that, really, because if they're overwhelmed, then I guess passing out is just too much for them, you know? Like, really, it's overexcited or whatever. Sorry about that. As I continue to think about this, we walked out to the main courtyard where the listing of today's activities and the room numbers were. I walked over to the piece of paper that was taped to a pillar and looked at our options. Alright, focus on Monica Finn. Yuri... Yuri's gonna be okay. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. After that inner monologue, I began reading the list. No, no. Monica's a vegetarian. No. That looks good. No! Uh... After a couple of seconds, I had narrowed down our options to two things. 
Candle making or a Super Smash Bros. tournament? Oh, Super Smash Bros. Well, I guess I don't mind for, for some Smash, you know, she can just be whoever she plays with and I'll be Sonic or Mario or, well, Steve as well. <laughs> I looked over at Monica. Uh, I don't think so. Candle making it is. Ah, are we gonna smash? Well, well, you know, that smash, but not that smash. You guys know what I mean. Thoughts on making some candles? Good idea, Finn. I love candles. Score. Well, uh, it says here it's in classroom 205. Wanna head on over? Lead the way. Okay, then. Dang, seems like we're the only ones that cared enough to decorate. Nice job, candle people. Really put some passion into this one. Uh... A few seconds passed and Monica, sitting next to me, whispered into my ear. They really didn't try too hard, did they? I whispered back. Doesn't seem that way, no. A dude that looked like he was indifferent to being here came by and nonchalantly put some supplies on your desk. A piece of paper with instructions, some wax, a plate, a Bunsen burner. Monica tapped my shoulder and I turned to face her. She's holding up the burner. They really trust us with these things? Uh, seems so. I grab the instructions and read them over. Take the wax and put it on your plate. As I read this out, Monica did the tasks. She put the wax on the plate. She put the plate on the burner. She put the melted wax in the mold. She put the coloring in, in with it. And she added the wick. Not too bad, right? Hmm. Oh, son of a- Don't touch the hot wax with your fingers. I'm not the brightest pencil in the pencil case. Well, I ain't the brightest brightest tool in the shed because I'm a dum-dum. I'll admit that. <laughs> ah, same thing, same minds think alike. As I think this, I accidentally get some coloring all over my fingers. Monica giggled and I exaggerated the frown. I then smeared some of the coloring on her nose as payback. Uh... Aww, <laughs> that's cute, and also kind of looks like she's uh, she's having a nosebleed. She just looks unamused, uh, or not amused, rather. <laughs> she laughed and stuck her finger in the coloring. She then smeared it on my face. Uh, I began to chuckle, and then we were both laughing. It went on for another few moments until Monica wiped it off. <laughs> We sat there for a few seconds and get back to making our candles. <laughs> I'm having a pretty good time. I hope this day never ends. Hopefully not. With my friend, Monica. The festival is ending soon. It's rather early, only being around, uh, which I assume is like 3 p.m. But these things never lasted that long anyway. Uh, and also, forgive me for, you know... <laughs> Not knowing time and such because I am not used to this format at all. But I wouldn't really know. This is my first time ever going to the festival. You know, return to Monica, we're both chilling on the roof. She said she wanted to tell me something, but she hasn't started speaking yet. So I took the opportunity to speak my mind. I never went to the festivals. I should I would usually stay home and watch anime or something. But not this time, because this time I had a reason to show up. I had a purpose. I was the club. I put a hand to my chin and tried to formulate my words. I never really wanted to join a club, but I was convinced after our first meeting. The way you guys looked after I said I didn't want to join, it made me feel guilty. And yeah, I'll admit I joined out of guilt. But that wasn't the reason why I stayed. I stayed because... Because I wanted to get to know, know you all better. You all warmed me up... Oh, you all warmed me up to it rather quickly. I like discussing literature with Yuri. I like talking about manga with Natsuki. And I like being able to spend some more time with Sayori. And you, Monica? Well... I once again tried to think about my next words. Back when we shared a class together, 
I figured you were just another popular girl. Some person that spits on peasants or whatever. But spending time with you made me realize how wrong I was. You're different, Monica. And I'm really glad to have gotten to know you better. Uh. After I let the word spaghetti fall out of my mouth, Monica continued to stare intently at me. She closed her eyes and dashed forward. And upon feeling something on my li oh, I opened my eyes wide in shock. Oh, yo, this CG is pretty good. Really love the um the art style in the. Well, art style, coloring, and clarity, and everything on it, but man, this is some impressive stuff. And MC's hair, well, yeah, he does, uh, well, kind of looks like Leon Kennedy from what the, what the girls jokingly mentioned. And yes, to address that one, I'm, uh, I admit, I'm a bit of a dumbass. I, I didn't know it was like a, um, a. <laughs> A Resident Evil joke and I didn't know it was that so um, there you go crisis averted so yeah I know a bit of the Resident Evil stuff but not too much because I don't play that much video games but I will if I can during my free time but whatever she's she's kissing me uh, holy sh <laughs> Monica's kissing me knowing what to do I go with my gut and kiss her back it's awkward Sloppy. We're both inexperienced. But it's not bad. And I can't say I didn't enjoy it. Monica broke it off and we both took some time to catch our breath. She's blushing, but so am I. I... Uh... I really like you, Finn. I have for a little while now. Huh. Huh? You... Like me? Like... Uh, how so? L love. I love you, Finn. Why? Since when? I'm not angry. Why would I be? I'm just so... confused. It's, uh, been a little while. How long? Well, you see, back when we shared a class together, I always looked at you with curiosity. You were a bit of a recluse. Someone who clearly didn't want to be the center of attention. But that only made me want to get to know you more. I would try to sit closer to you in class, try to strike up a few conversations every now and then. But you either didn't notice or didn't care. I think back on a few times I had paid attention in class. Ah, shoot. I completely blew her off. Monica, I didn't mean to. It's fine. It's in the past at this point. Sure, but it's the principle of the thing. Monica. Finn, I told you, it's okay. He had a pretty good reason for not wanting to talk to me. She looked away and whispered. I never spit on any peasants though. I rubbed the back of my neck and I rubbed my neck and chuckled nervously. Monica sighed. Eventually, I gave up. It was an un unrequited, unrequited friendship. Uh, I never stopped thinking about you, though. In the time between me giving up, the school year ending, and you joining joining the club, I continued to think. I thought about what I could have done better, the mistakes I made. Though a constant was also me questioning the why. The why? Why, you were so ingrained into my thoughts. And slowly it came to me. She hesitated. Slowly, I realized. I had fallen in love with you. Uh, wow. And it, well, it made me really sad to know that I could never have that love returned. It was hopeless. We didn't have any classes together this year and I didn't know where you spend your time. And then I... I trailed off, which allowed Monica to finish my thought. And then you joined the Lurcher Club. I was so happy that day, I felt like kissing you right on the spot. But I couldn't. I definitely couldn't. You had no interest in me, I already knew that. But eventually, I got my chance. Today. She nodded. Yep, 
Exactly. I could hang out with you during the festival. I could get close to you and ask you to come to the roof. I could tell you my feelings, but we, but then we would ride off into the sunset. I smiled. Clearly, not everything came into fruition. It kind of went against my own plan. She chuckled nervously. I just, well, what you said, it really made me happy. But it also made me really excited. Nervous too. So I acted. I sat in stunned silence. Monica, he... I'm having a hard time believing it, really. She's in love with me. Heck, she even proved it. That speech, and the kiss, especially. Is this... Are we dating now? Is that how this works? Uh... Do I want to date Monica? Um... I mean, yeah. I've always wanted a girlfriend. What guy doesn't? I've been lonely my whole life. This is your chance, Finn. So, uh... Will you, um... Will you go out with me? They say, in life, to take it easy. Take it easy. But take it. Yeah. Aww. Monica rushed forward, smiled wide, and gave me, gave me a bear hug. I, not knowing what to really do, awkwardly hugged back. After a few moments, she backed off slightly. A anyway, I have to get going. What? Where to? It's not very late, but I can't imagine she would make plans on the day of the festival. I have a swim meet in a few hours. Uh, swim meet? Okay, apparently she likes practicing piano and then now she's, uh, a sweet swimming? Alright, okay, okay. I began to imagine Monica in swimsuit. At first, I didn't think much of it. Oh! Okay, um, I've seen this sprite before. That's from, uh, Doki Doki Summertime, I think, and some few beach episodes or beach mods I've, 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 I've watched, but... Okay, it was nice, but she was my girlfriend now, right? This isn't creepy. Nah, and not. Oh, there's Yuri. Uh... Okay, then, um... Hmm. Monica giggled upon seeing my cheeks turn bright red. You can come watch if you want. Oh, good idea. The first step to being a boyfriend is to show support to your, for your loved ones. Sure, I'll be there. Way to show off your confidence. I cleared my throat and continued. Is that at the public pool? No, it's at my mansion? Oh! So apparently Monica in this one seems to be a, um, a rich person that's an, a rich and wealthy one. That's cool. I froze. Relax, I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're such a kidder. Yes, it's at the public pool. Around, uh, I yeah, assume that's uh, 6.45 p.m. I don't know. Again, I'm not used to this kind of format of time. So again, please, uh, please forgive me. So it's not too long from now. She turned to walk to the roof e to the roof exit and waved. I'll see you then. I'll catch ya. I pulled out my phone to look up the directions to this place until I remembered. Hey, wait! Monica turned around as she was holding open the door. Yes? Isn't it a little too cold for a swim meet? It's November. And thanks for worrying, but the pools are indoors. Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. They want us to do a swim all year, so they took advantage of the indoor pools. It can get tiring. But I like to swim, so I don't really mind. Uh... Fair enough then. H anyway... I gotta go. See ya! She turns around and walks through the roof exit door. I wave limply and slowly put my hand down afterwards. I began to try and process what exactly had occurred. I got a girlfriend, and it's Monica! Woohoo!
Well, I guess that's just this mod because, like I said, not my favorite, but uh, to you Monica fans, I know you guys are excited for this. Yuri fans as well, because this is also a Yuri-focused mod. Yuri ran through the halls of the school, holding her head in her hands. She didn't care that she was breaking the rules. Running in the halls, they say. Whatever. She just wanted to be alone. She needed to think. And that pink... Yuri, slow down. That pink brat isn't helping. Yuri rammed her shoulder into the woman's back bathroom door. While it hurt, it allowed for a quick entrance. She quickly ran to a nearby stall, entered and locked the door behind her. Oh. Yuri, hey, no. Yuri slapped a hand over her mouth. Calm down. Natsuki. Yuri took a deep breath. Natsuki, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But please, just leave me alone for a little while. Uh... For a bit, there's no response. The silence is broken by Natsuki exhaling in defeat. Alright. Just... She hesitated. Whatever. I'll see you later, Yuri. G Goodbye. Yur uh, Natsuki walked away, mumbling something about being alone. But Yuri didn't pay much attention to it. Instead, she sat down on the ba floor of the bathroom, not caring about how dirty it was. She put her fingers to her nose and massaged it. You passed out. And in front of Finn. Glob, he probably thinks you're some kind of weirdo. Who just, who just faints? And it's because of a little public speaking. Well, that's great. On top of being a weirdo, he definitely thinks I'm some kind of scared cat. Well, you are. Yuri, the scared little girl, can talk to somebody without breaking down, and can talk to many without losing consciousness, and all of it in front of her greatest friend. Uh... Friend? Is Finn my friend? Of course! We're all friends in the literature club, so why the heck not? It's just... it's all just confusing. I doubt it. Even if I believe we are friends, would he believe we are friends? Of course I do. If he doesn't consider me his friend, would he even want to? After today, he'd be surprised. Who would want to be friends with her? A scared, weak little girl. He... he just... She began to breathe even loud, harder. Or... <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Okay, calm down, Yuri. Calm down, even though I'm not there right now or here. But please just, just breathe in and breathe out. It was getting harder and harder to suck air into her lungs, and her vision is was getting rather cloudy. I... Yuri reached into her back pocket and pulled out a small handkerchief. Red in color, it had a nice soon-on picture of a butterfly. It was a gift from her mother. Upon unraveling it, she grabbed the razor blade she kept inside. S sorry mama. As she pulled back her sleeve and slowly put the cold metal to her arm. Yeah, just a little bit. Her hands shook as she took a deep breath. In one fluid motion, she sucked in a big breath of air and swiped the blade across her skin. She winced and watched as the blood quickly flowed from the affected area. But she forgot all of that as she took it in. The rush. The endomorphins. She exhaled and her pupils dilated. As the metallic scent filled her nostrils and the blood dripped to the floor, she began to feel lightheaded. She let her muscles relax as her breathing slowed. I... Her eyelids got heavy and she took in another deep breath. Uh... I... I needed that. After today? She chuckled. You thought you would have... We could have a big day like this without doing it, hmm? I knew you could do it. She muttered sarcastically and then sniffled. 
The rush was slowly leaving, and she could feel herself falling back down to earth. She looked at the blood all over the floor and winced. Ew. She grabbed her handkerchief and dabbed at the wound, cleaning up a minor amount of the crimson liquid. She reached into her purse and pulled out a roll of bandages, along with a small bottle of peroxide. She wet the handkerchief with some and, upon putting it to her cut, winced. She never liked disinfecting the wound. She bandaged her arm quickly, pulled, out, pulled back her sleeve, and cleaned up the blood on the floor with some toilet paper. She walked out of the stall and on her way out of the bathroom, she stared herself in the, floor, in the mirror. She, she saw her cloudy eyes and, ru and running makeup. She never should have put that on. She shied, sighed, sorry. You're a freak, Yuri. She wiped the black liquid into the arm of her sweater. Freaks don't deserve to feel pretty. Yuri walked out of the bathroom, thinking about the past few moments in shame. She walked along the lone hallways, feeling as she were floating. Uh, a share would be a good idea. She thought about the quickest spot she could go for some. She's on the third floor, right? The exit is a ways away. I can probably head to the roof. Yuri smiled at the thought. Yeah. She began to move with some more pep in her step as she walked to the roof stairs. She walked to the aforementioned set of stairs and opened the door. Upon opening the door, she was met with a less than wanted sight. Two of her closest friends, engaging in acts fitting for a couple. Yuri slowly closed the door and walked back downstairs. Upon getting to the space where she was alone, she fell to the ground and began to cry. She didn't know why, but after seeing that, she felt defeated. She felt hurt. Hurt beyond belief. Also, uh, forgive about, forgive me about that sudden jittery or laggy thing back there. Um, oh man, uh, how, how do I say this? It was lagging or something because fuck you, OBS. Literally, fuck you. As Monica's we meet had ended a few minutes ago, we were walking home together. It was nice outside. Dark, but nice. I hadn't checked my phone in a little while, so I was unsure of the time, but I knew it had to be late. If the sky were anything to go off, at least. Uh, though in recent, it hadn't been. Winter always fucks with the day and night cycle. It very well could have been 7.30. Although I guess everything today is questionable. Who the heck has a swim meet in the winter time? As I thought this, Monica tapped my shoulder. Uh, sorry if this is a weird question, but where are we going? Uh, wait, where are we going? 